Timber Creek Campground is set in a wooded area in north-central Idaho near to Montana. The campground has two creeks running on either side of it and is a popular camping site for Idahoan families during the summer months. It was on July 10, 2015 that a two-year-old toddler by the name of Dior Kunz Jr. went missing at the campground. He'd been there since the day before with his mom and dad, as well as his great-grandfather and a friend of the latter. Then, suddenly, the little boy just vanished. What happened to Dior Kunz Jr.? Did he wander off and somehow get lost? Or was he abducted by a stranger, as his family claims must have happened? Or did something more sinister happen to little Dior? Are his family perhaps even implicated in his disappearance? No definitive information is yet known about what really happened to Dior. This video will attempt to offer as much of what we know about the case as possible. Early on July 9, 2015, Vernal Kuntz and Jessica Mitchell left their home in Idaho Falls on a two-hour, 120-mile trip north. With them was their two-year-old son, Dior. Along for the trip was also Vernal's grandfather, Robert Walton, who would have been Dior's great-grandfather, as well as a friend of Robert's named Isaac Reinwand. They were on their way to Timber Creek Campground near Stone Reservoir in Lemmy County, Idaho. The last part of the trip would have taken them along the rocky track from the local town of Leodore to the campsite. The road is a complete dead end, with the campsite situated at the very end. Dior was a happy little boy, who was always smiling and hardly ever cried. Even at his young age, he'd become a seasoned camper and had enjoyed these trips in the past. Upon arrival, the family set up the camp and spent the night in two separate tents. Vernal and Jessica say they took Dior to a general store the next morning of July 10th, as they wanted to shop for supplies and snacks after cooking up a full breakfast at the camp. That morning, Dior was wearing oversized cowboy boots, a camouflage jacket, and pajama pants. They returned to the campsite, and Jessica and Vernal would say they decided that they wanted to explore the woods on their own, as well as look for some fish in the creek. They left Dior with the boy's great-grandfather and ventured off. Vernal said they made it 50 yards from the site before discovering some minnows in the creek, which they thought Dior would love to see, so they ventured back to where they had left him. Vernal would say, I walked up the embankment and when I looked over, he wasn't in his chair and he wasn't with his great-granddad. Vernal asked Robert Walton where Dior was and the older man purportedly replied in a shocked tone, I thought he was with you. It didn't help that the elderly Robert was hard of hearing. He also used an oxygen tank to help with his breathing. Some reports suggest Robert was also suffering from Alzheimer's. After speaking to Robert, the parents say they shouted out for their young son, but soon realized he was nowhere to be found. The parents claimed that after about 20 minutes, Vernal drove their pickup truck from the campground to try and get some cell service. It was 2.28 p.m. Mountain Time on July 10, 2015, when Dior's mother first reported him missing to police. It later transpired that she had stayed behind at the campsite. The two-mile radius around the area had officers from the Lemmy County Sheriff's Office scouring the scene within an hour of Dior's disappearance. Soon after, search and rescue crews began combing the landscape in all-terrain vehicles, or ATVs, while divers searched inside of the nearby reservoir. Within 12 hours, nearly 200 volunteer searchers from all over Idaho were helping to look for Dior. A helicopter with thermal imaging cameras flew over the area for most of the night, but saw nothing. In the meantime, about 120 miles away from the campground, a cashier at Walmart spotted a man buying packs of diapers and clutching the hand of a small boy with blonde hair and hazel eyes. The boy's description was an identical match for Dior. The worker called 911 and cops rushed to the store to make inquiries. The man from Walmart was located the next day, and police were able to ascertain the boy he was with was not Dior, but his own son. By that next day, Saturday, July 11th, the search for Dior was in full swing. Searchers were on horseback, ATVs, on foot, 
and were looking in the surrounding creeks. The main focus was on the two-mile radius around the campground. One area of particular concern was a creek about 15 yards away from the campsite, given its close proximity to where Dior was last presumed to be. The creek was four to six feet in width and about a foot deep, enough to drown or at least sweep a toddler away. That area was searched numerous times, but to no avail. After two days of fruitless attempts to find Dior, the ground search was called off. Divers continued concentrating on nearby Stone Creek Reservoir, but found nothing. However, cadaver dogs kept getting false leads in the vicinity of the reservoir. By pure coincidence, it turned out that a man had deposited cremated ashes on the very same day that Dior disappeared, hence all the false leads for the cadaver dogs. There was yet another false lead a few days later, when a missing child was found hundreds of miles away in a motel in Stanton, California, who looked very much like Dior. Local investigators soon found out the boy found in the California motel was not Dior, and that his mother had been frantically looking for him. By this time, the Lemmy County Police decided to call in the FBI. Detective Penner of the Lemmy County Police would say, quote, Timber Creek Campground has a secret that needs to be revealed. Odd behavior and inconsistencies from the four adults in the group arose almost immediately. Police eyewitnesses claim that during the first interview, Jessica's body language was angry and hostile toward Vernal. The parents initially said they were together when the child went missing, yet according to Robert Walton's friend Isaac, they were not together. Isaac would claim he and Jessica went to the creek together and that Vernal and a little Dior were to follow, but never showed up at the creek. When pressed with that version of events, Vernal would state that Dior wanted to be with his great-grandfather and so walked back to the campsite. But where did the boy go, and why would his father allow his two-year-old son to wander anywhere unattended, especially in a wooded area? Furthermore, the claim by Jessica and Vernal was they contacted police within 20 minutes of their son disappearing. However, timeline analysis showed it was more like an hour later. It seemed odd to many that the parents would take so long to call the police after discovering their two-year-old child was missing. Some have also questioned the need for Vernal to jump in his truck and race down the road to find more than one bar on his phone. She called and I was in the truck hauling down to the road to try and get service because I didn't think one bar would get it. So she got very, very lucky. I was blessed that she was able to get service because I didn't, didn't want to try and risk getting halfway through my talking to the 911 and have it cut off. After all, GPS locating suggests that Jessica was able to phone the police from right there at the campsite. These same people contend that Vernal may have used that time as an opportunity to remove Dior's body from the scene of a possible accident or even a murder. However, Isaac's aforementioned testimony was not pristine either, given that his body language in subsequent interviews with the media was deemed unsettling, as if he were hiding something. There have also been claims that Isaac is rather suggestive, given that he does have diminished mental capacity. The investigation and search for Dior was also botched from the very beginning. People were all over the place searching and possibly messing with what could have been a crime scene. In addition, Vernal was allowed to go out searching on an ATV, which is not standard procedure. Usually in these types of cases, any persons of interest, which must include the parents, are kept close while investigators do their work. Robert Walton, the great-grandfather at the scene that fateful day, only ever gave audio interviews, refusing to appear on TV. People have noted how he consistently referred to Dior as the kid or that kid in interviews. That type of terminology can be a telltale sign in psychology that a guilty person is trying to distance themselves from the subject. He also seemed to laugh at what would be considered inappropriate times. Even more unsettling was that, when asked the questions, what does your heart tell you happened to little Dior? And do you know where little Dior is? Both responses were met with cackling laughter by Walton.
It was in January 2016, six months after Dior's disappearance, that the lead investigator in the case, Lynn D. Bowerman, revealed to local media the two parents were prime suspects in the mystery. Bowerman revealed that the FBI had found the parents to be, in his words, less than truthful in their polygraphs and had a lot of irregularities and discrepancies in their interviews. In July 2016, a search was undertaken of the parents' home and the camo jacket Dior was allegedly wearing when he disappeared was found within the apartment complex. This reinforced Bowerman's suspicions that the parents were hiding something. However, despite this, neither Jessica Mitchell nor Vernal Kuntz were ever formally charged or arrested for the disappearance of their son. A real twist in the case was that of Philip Klein. He was hired by the family as a private investigator or PI for the case. Amid great controversy, Klein would resign just a few days later, claiming that he'd always told the family he would only help investigate Dior's disappearance if he believed the family were telling the truth, and he claimed the parents were not being completely truthful with him. P.I. Klein agrees to this day with what the police also suspect. He and his team conclude there was an accidental homicide and that one or more people in that group of four adults knows what happened to little Dior. Klein went even further, stating that Jessica had told his investigators that she knew where the body was. Within hours of the claims, Klein was fired by the family and an attorney was hired to sue him in a defamation suit. The family sued Philip Klein of Texas-based Klein Investigations and Consulting for breach of contract, infliction of emotional distress, libel, slander, and fraud. The family lost the lawsuit, and District Judge Bruce Pickett denied an appeal in the lawsuit against P.I. Klein. Klein retaliated by demanding the Kuntz family pay him unpaid fees. In a news release, Klein blasted both of Dior's parents. He would state, quote, after 31 years of doing our jobs, we've seen this 100 times. We are out of the case, but do what we told you both to do years ago. Stop lying, tell the truth, and put this matter to an end. You have an obligation to your Dior, your family, the public of Idaho, and that of the United States. Investigators returned to the campsite in late June of 2019 to focus on an area of interest in the search for Dior. David Marshburn was a private investigator working with the Search For Me Foundation, and he spent a few days in Lemmy County at the behest of Sheriff Steve Penner. Marshburn brought with him two trained search dogs. He says his search dogs signaled at what he called a hard alert for human remains in one particular area. He also noted his dogs are trained not to react to animals. Marshburn conceded that another human body could have been at the location, but would not reveal whether law enforcement had actually uncovered any human remains. Marshburn would write on his Facebook page, we cannot confirm or deny anything at this time. We'll be returning to North Carolina because we feel our part is done. Penner confirmed that his police department worked with Marshburn and said to local media, I can tell you we have focused and will be focused on an area of interest for the next few weeks. I can confirm no new evidence has been collected at this time and we continue to investigate this case. As of the time of this video, the Lemmy County Police continue to believe that Dior Kuntz Jr. was almost certainly murdered, or at the very least, died accidentally and his death was covered up. The county's lead police investigator, Bowerman, has reiterated that the police are treating the case as a probable homicide. Even though Sheriff Lynn Bowerman publicly named Vernal and Jessica as suspects, the parents continue to deny they had anything to do with Dior's disappearance. Robert Walton passed away in June of 2019. According to his daughter, Robert took his sadness and guilt for taking his eyes off Dior to his grave. He and Isaac Reinwand were named as persons of interest at the time of the lead investigation, but like Vernal and Jessica, were never charged or arrested. There are many theories as to what might have happened to little Dior. 
One theory is he may indeed have been abducted, even though the Lemmy County Sheriff's Office has officially ruled that out. The next theory is that Dior may have wandered off, got lost, and died of exposure, and his body may still be somewhere near the Timber Creek campground. Another theory is the possibility there may have been an animal attack. This animal might have grabbed and then killed Dior. The campground was a fairly remote, rugged part of Idaho, and wild animals such as wolves, bears, and lynx can be found in the region. Although this does seem unlikely, due to the fact that no trace of blood, clothing, or the oversized cowboy boots Dior was wearing that day have ever been found. The next theory is it might have been a homicide. The twist is that this homicide could have either been intentional or unintentional. The local police believe it most likely to be the latter. That would mean someone or some people know what happened to Dior that day. That is, he died accidentally and there was a subsequent cover-up. When questioned by the media, Jessica admitted she felt Isaac Reinwand could have been responsible for Dior's disappearance. She said there were red flags from day one. Jessica claims Reinwand seemed upset they had brought Dior on the trip. On the day of the disappearance, she said Reinwand didn't join the search, was drinking heavily in his tent, and had apparently restored his cell phone to factory settings on more than one occasion. Lastly, there is another, even more bizarre theory, and that is speculation by some conspiracy theorists that Dior may never have gone to the campground at all. This theory contradicts Isaac Reinwand, who insists he saw Dior the morning of his disappearance. However, according to the sheriff, there were actually no credible witnesses to confirm that they had definitely seen Dior at the campground. Those who believe this theory suggest something happened to Dior prior to going camping and that the trip was used as a cover story. There have been many changes in the Kuntz family since Dior disappeared over four years ago. Since then, Vernal moved to another state for a truck driving job, while Jessica met and married another man within eight months of Dior's disappearance. Trina Bates Clegg, Jessica's mother and Dior's maternal grandmother, told local media in 2019 the family is still wondering what could have happened to the young boy. Trina claims that Sheriff Steve Penner has told her to remain strong and to continue being patient. Trina would go on to say, quote, Honestly, I still have hope that he's alive, but everyone keeps saying that at this point, he's probably not alive. I still want that two-and-a-half-year-old boy brought back to us. I can't lose hope, but I'm losing hope he's still alive. Trina and the rest of the family are still waiting for answers. So, after being presented with the facts of this case, what do you believe happened to two-year-old Dior Kuntz Jr.? Do you feel he wandered off and died after encountering a wild animal or perished from exposure? Do you believe he may indeed have been abducted after all? Or do you think there was foul play of some sort, perhaps even involving one or both of his parents? For now, the case remains one of the most baffling missing children cases not only in recent Idaho history, but recent American history, too.